What we're trying to do is keep that line, those two lines parallel, spread the toes, and see if you can keep the toes on the same level. Bring your fingertips back, squeeze the legs together, and so when you squeeze the legs together, you're going to feel mula bandha, the upper inner thighs, maybe a little bit of the buttocks, the lower abdominals coming in. So you want to maintain that and then walk your fingertips forward and have your arms out and see if you can balance here. Okay? Because for Pashasana, first is foundation. So we need to try to figure out how to be able to hold ourselves here before we get into the twisting. Okay, now you're going to slowly let the buttocks come down and then lift up. Buttocks down, try to keep the knees together, lift up. Buttocks down, lift up. Trying to squeeze the knees together and lift up. One more, down and up. And now come down, bring your shin bones parallel with the floor, open your arms out to the sides, and you're gonna open the knees, put your fists on the inner thighs, Press your fists into the inner thighs, but then press your knees together. So giving some resistance. This is what you need for Pashasana. So press your hands, squeeze the knees together. Open the arms, open the knees, close the knees. Open, close, open, close, open, close. And then just relax here. Bring your hands forward. Step yourself back, come into a downward facing dog, stretch out the lower back. And just come onto the knees. Okay, so I want to talk about something for the pelvis area here because in this pose, it's the Pashasana, we're sitting like this and we're, we're binding around. So in this pose, sometimes if we sink into it, then we get this kind of pinching happening at the front of the groins here. And we don't want to have that happening. So in fact, if you take your hands and kind of like karate chop right at the groins there, and you bring your baby fingers along those groins, and then sit up, and then press the fingertips into those lower abdominals, and then you're going to keep your chest lifted but you're gonna fold forward and you're not gonna squeeze your fingers, okay? Your baby fingers won't get squished. So press the lower abdominals, wrap the two hip bones together, feel like you're still lengthening the chest, but you feel like you're kind of rounding around the fingers, like you're rounding over the fingers, okay? So then see where you can go. If you can, you put your forehead down, and then what you want to do is see this feeling. What does it feel like? Try to memorize this feeling in the body because we're not balancing. It's easier to feel that space in the front of the groins. And then you're going to release your fingers, take your hands on your sitting bones, and then slide the sitting bones under slightly, wrap them under, and then push the sitting bones towards each other. Okay, so now you've got the lower abdominals, this is Uriyana Bandha, and then you're using your hands to remind you about Mula Bandha. And then you're going to release your arms, and notice if you can keep this, can you maintain this? So you have this sense of steadiness in the pelvis, so you're working here, you're not relaxed here, it's not a normal child's pose, so you feel that sense of steadiness, and then at the same time, you feel some space in the front of the groins. And then you're going to come up. So you might need to play with that a few times to make yourself understand that. Now let's understand the arms. So it's a binding position. So you're going to stretch your arms out to the sides and then feel this wrapping in. Find your bandhas. So there's the steadiness in the pelvis, but the chest is reaching away from the pelvis. 
And notice that if you open your palms up towards the ceiling, you feel kind of a softening of the shoulders, like the shoulder blades soften away from the ears. Then, if you turn your thumbs downwards, you can still keep that softening of the shoulders. And then bend at the elbows and still feel like the shoulder blades are softening away from the ears. Okay, so when we're doing these binds, the, what is typically happening to all of us is that when we're trying to bind way over here, I'll end up lifting my arm, lifting my shoulder blade, and then I'll end up kind of like this in my twist, right? Left side all crunch, right side lengthened, and my shoulder near my ear, something like that. And so this, I don't know, it doesn't really feel good in the neck and it's not the best thing for the collarbone and the shoulder blade and all this, this area here. But what we're, so what we're actually trying to do is keep the shoulder in this um, neutral position and then it's the turning of, around the elbow and then turning a little bit inside in the joint, right? It's internal rotation of the joint. Okay, so just try, you can put one hand on the collarbone, stretch the arm out, and notice that you can really rotate almost all the way without any collarbone rotation. Now, start to, we're gonna exaggerate it, you're gonna start to lift your shoulder and rotate your shoulder forward, and you feel what happens in the collarbone, okay? So it's normal we have a little bit of that, but generally we tend to do too much. Let's try the other side. Put your fingers on your collarbone and notice your palm can stay up and then see how much you can rotate. Turn the thumb downwards, rotate, start to bend, lift, rotate. And it's only really at the very end that you feel like the uh, shoulder blades lift and the collarbones make this big deep indentation here. Okay, so try to keep those two things in mind. What we're trying to achieve in the pelvis, what we're trying to achieve in the shoulder girdle. So let's come back into a downward dog, just warming ourselves up. And you're going to bend your knees, hop yourself forward. Um, I forgot to ask if you guys have uh, blocks. I'm gonna, if you have a block, just run and grab that. Um, the other component in Pashasana is the twist is coming a lot from the belly, right? When we were doing this very first exercise, you felt your belly really engaging. And then there's a lot of work coming from the upper back as well. Okay, so ideally, we're keeping the toes together. Now, it's, this is, if you've been working on this for a long time and you're quite flexible, then this is going to work. If not, then you can slide your, we're going to turn to the left first, you could slide your right toes a little bit forward. And so what does that do? That is when we were sitting here doing this position and when you turned deeply to the right, you probably notice that your left sitting bone was coming off the floor a little bit, right? And when you do the other side, it's the opposite. So this is kind of getting some rotation in space because our lumbar spine is not meant to rotate and we certainly don't want to rotate in the SI joints. So when we change the toes like this, we give a little bit of um, one toe a little forward, then it helps us to find a little bit of that movement in the pelvis, okay? So it's like, I'm doing this. I'm trying to exaggerate so you can see what I'm doing, but trying to get the pelvis to move. If we do too much of that though, then it goes into the hip joints. So you have to be aware, it's gonna be rubbing the hip joints in not a very um, state, uh, safe way. And then also it can go into the knees. You know, if your knees are really turned to one side. So you have to be careful with those two things on how much you let that happen. So you're gonna come and you're gonna sit on your block 
and see I have some space between my feet and the block. And so we'll try that. You can bring your right toe just like two centimeters forward, one or two centimeters, very little. And then you're going to, so I'm on the block, but I'm going to tilt forward, okay? So that I'm on the edge of my block, on the one corner of my block. Okay, so from here, then we can bring our left fingertip behind us and right elbow either, if you feel like you're a little tight, then you could separate the feet and bring your elbow on the inside of the knee, like what we started with, and press the knee into the arm, the arm into the knee. If you feel like you're a little bit more open tonight, then you hook the elbow on the outside of the knee. And you're gonna check your shoulder blade is anchored onto the back. It feels like it's wrapping in an arc, forward and up. So your left fingertips behind, squeeze Mulabandha, squeeze Uddiyana Bandha, try to keep the knees pointing in the same direction, and then press your elbow, squeeze those bandhas, squeeze the belly, and press, keep this big amount of space between your leg and your torso. Okay, anchor the two shoulder blades onto the back. So you can stay here, or if you're feeling a little more flexible, then you lean down a little bit. And then from here, you want to feel like the skin of the upper outer arm is sliding down towards the floor. Okay, skin of the upper outer arm sliding down. And now press into your arm, press into your knee. They're pressing towards one another. Feel the squeezing of the abdominal area. Really what's happening is the right ribs are coming to the left hip bone. Okay, so now you're gonna to come to the other side and you're gonna hook your left elbow, check your toes are pointing forward, the knees are pointing forward, left elbow on the outside of the knee, inhale, lengthen through the spine, right fingertips somewhere behind you, and then press your knee into your elbow, elbow into the knee, take your right hand to your shoulder blade, drop that shoulder blade down, and you can even help yourself twist a little. You feel like your left ribs are coming to your right hip bone. So it's at an angle. And then if you're still feeling like you want to get a little deeper, then you can bring the arm on the outside. And then press and wrap that left rib to the right hip. And then you're going to release that. Release your block, put the hands on the floor, step or hop back, come down into a chaturanga, inhale, let's stay in an upward dog, let's press the toes, relax the back, squeeze the hip bones towards one another. And turn the toes, hop the feet forward. Okay, so, this is a big thing of controversy because very often we want to do the twist before we can actually find some stability in the feet. So there's different ways to approach it. This way I'm going to do is focusing first on foundation, second on twist. And then we can try the opposite way. So you want your feet firm on the floor and together. And if somebody, if that's just absolutely not possible, then you can take, um, you can take a little towel, for instance, and roll your towel up and bring your heels un uh, onto your towel. And if that's not enough space, maybe you roll your yoga mat at the front and you bring your heels on your yoga mat. So one or the other, but try to find some stability somehow. Um, Okay, so your toes are together, you're going to slide your fingertips back, press into the hands, squeeze the knees together, feel the pelvic floor, lower abdominals, and then walk your fingertips forward, and you need to be able to hold yourself here. Okay, so this is highly important. It's going to strengthen the shins, it strengthens the adductors, strengthens the bandhas. And then put your left fingertips behind you, 
poke your elbow on the outside of the knee. Check the skin is going down. The shoulder blade is anchored. Press them into one another. Get that, and you need to have this big space here on the side of the body. Okay, so you want to have this big space between your leg and your chest to start with. Squeezing the bandhas so you feel like your chest can just reach way into that big space over here. And then from there, squeeze your right ribs towards your left hip bone and pull your left ribs away from your left hip bone and see if you can go a little deeper. And then hold here. Press your arm, press your knee, and so you can stay here, and then you, from here, you check. Can I get some balance, right? You're gonna see, can you lift that arm? Can I find that balance? Okay, you experiment very often. It's like something like that, but you experiment, and then slowly, slowly, you're gonna be able to hold it. So you can put your hands in prayer, 